nossa boa noite a todos os congressistas que mais uma vez estão junto together com a gente. Us in the second day of the 24th Congress of International of Education of LGW. In 2022, we are together to speak about our daily life, especially of yours that are you are in school atmospheres environments, learning at home and society, because we learn all the time. This year, we're beginning to speak about the challenges of learning and emotional health. The reflex of the pandemic, it's a view. It's important. The reflexes were many, but we're here available to find solutions. And that's what we are here doing since yesterday. You were here yesterday. You know we had the first conference and then with speaker with Swili Siloto also dividing her experiences by educational and education spirituality and we also accompanied the, the practical pedagogic of impact emotional individuals and today we are going to continue this that's why that you are with us since now thank you very much for your presence for your participation and invitations if you are accompanying us enter your social networks and write lgw brazil and we will see all the comments that you have press making the great things for us in this encounter in, uh, in the Instagram and also Facebook and Twitter Aroba LBV Brazils and with this invitation I would like to bring here the opportunity to unite by the heart emotion that is so important and such a highlight today in our conversation. Since 1940, all the activities of LGW started with a greeting, a greeting of pace, of goodwill that unites us by the heart, unites by the emotions, the feelings, and that all of us share, which is to improve our life and improve ourselves. So now, together, and you that are watching us at home, our greeting, God is President, Viva Jesus in our heart for always. And now we begin requesting God for his religious tradition. And even if you don't have a religious tra tradition, you are respected in your beliefs. Let's mentalize, seek, and prove the best that we have in us. So we bring this to society, those that we educate. And today we are going to speak about this, how it impacted, because we know not only this year of 2022, but for a while we will have reflexes of the pandemic in all the areas of life in health and science and education, family life. And, and during this event in 2022 edition, we will be able to accompany research of the last years of what is happening in learning of the children. And there's a lot to be done, but we can't disanimate. This is to show that we have to think of this theme, what we're going to do today. But... So we highlighted some of the traditions that we need to commit. Here, I'm very emotional with all these expectations. So when we're this way, so we're so a little accelerated. So now let's calm down our thoughts, our hearts. You're at home. Be more peaceful in your routine. And in this music, this is a special to conf to, for the pain of all. And this is the educator and Paiva Neto, we're going to go a moment of silence with Jesus. Jesus.
prayer for tranquility, songs by Dr. Apaiva Neto, and we can, with these images of nature and this sound, seek some silence, tranquility that help us to observe better our challenges, look improvement, our attitudes, and those that are by our side. And like this, we want to be during the event today. So if you have some suggestions, some questions to share, please feel at ease. Put it in the chat in YouTube. It's open. Send your participation, the city where you are, location, and feel at ease during this event to share your experiences. We learn together in this encounter of LGW. And as we know, yesterday it was very successful. The musical part, everyone loved it. And so now we have more music in our program. Children also enchant us. And now we're going to start with an, um, another important thing. Yesterday it was nature, and today it's the importance of sports. Not anyway. We have to sing the name, and it says everything. Sports is life, not violence, And by Newton Blatt. And also oh, LGW, sport is life not violent and we have the kids that will accompany us and and they will be here to accompany us and he and so the production is Atalio Sonjimenez Alves here we go my name is Silva Lorena Silva I'm seven years old my name is Aluna Rigel I'm seven my name is Ruccelli I'm seven years old I am Giovanni Almeida, and I'm seven years old. My name is Olivia Leao, and I'm six years. My name is Valentina Sanz, and I'm six. My name is Cynthia Alves, and I'm six years old. My name is Maria Eduardo, and I'm six years old. I'm David Alves, and I'm six years old. I'm Sofia Ranjo, and I'm six years old. My name is Deborah Silvas, and I'm six years old. I'm um, Tomás de Assis Fraga. I'm seven years old. Sports is life. It is not violence. Sports is life, not violence. Inspired by a LGW song, it's not violence. Participation by the children of the first and second grade of Giuseppe Paivanetto, LGW. And percussion instruments and Professor Eduardo Stossia was on the guitar. Such happiness and such an important thing and in the school environment for school for life for the children especially this year that we have the world cup and so they are very attentive to this and think about this because the lgw promotes this the importance of sports 
and also not speaking of violence because the world today it occurs so much let's be inspired by this composition now we're going to sing a little more now we're going to share emotions by instruments that bring another message now we're going to accompany the music economic citizen i am let me get the technical Ita Lacchetti from Salvador is the letter. She makes the song right. Enrique Pedra also. And these are the children from percussion. Giuseppe Ivanetta and LGW in Sao Paulo. You Ecumenical? Yes, I am. <laughs>
Citizen, economic citizen. This is great. And there's lyrics of Salvador Bahia and Anthony Barcelos of Sao Paulo. This is from Enrique Pedra, and these are from the students of percussions and medals of José Paiva Neta, educational group from Sao Paulo. This is how we start our study today. That's what we are doing, learning, listening, thinking, and thinking how to take this to life, to the classroom, to the families. And now we're going to start now with the first speaker and the chat of YouTube is for your commentaries and this event is being transmitted English Portuguese and Spanish and all the companies that accompany us thank you all for being here now we're going to go to our first lecture who's going to speak with us today is professor pedagoga uh, Angela Matilda Suarez psychoanalysis psychopedagogue neuroscientist Ma master and doctor in psychoanalysis doctor and psychopedagogue from France Doctors in neurosciences in the States and science, postdoc in neuroscience, writer, and also she, in the Institute of IMP, TAMS. She teaches in Pukiminas and coordinator of Cruz in the Southeast region. She's also national counselor of the Brazilian Association of Psychoanalysts, international, also Brain Connection Brazil. And also, she works with, in the European Union with health, writer of various books in the area, and has various prizes, international and national. It's with Dr. Angela we're going to know about the emotional cognition impacts in learning and in social and emotional relations. Here we go. Hello, all. How are you all? I'm very happy and honored with the invitation to participate in this event. LGW brings education with lots of love, humanized, that worries with the others. And this is the goal, to be an educationer. And so I niche in my lectures telling you, you don't need to be perfect. You just need to have love and respect. That is so important. So the goal to be an educator is not to, not to be perfect. You know, you can't be perfect of superwoman, Batman. A teacher knows everything. The teacher that knows everything doesn't know anything. The teacher that mediates, that has experiences, the pro that is a mediator, the teacher that works with the problems, these see our teachers, the, the, the stimulus that he gives to the student. This is the answer, and he receives this. So you can't be perfect. You need to have um, love. What love is this? It's the love. There's other ways to deal. You have to be physically present with your speech, with your eyes, with references. You have to have respect for the other, respect for the difficulties that the student presents or the abilities that still he doesn't have and he, and he doesn't know his abilities. This is respect and not speak about him badly. The teacher can do bullying, can do bullying with the student. The, so this, for you to be a teacher that has the goal to seek alternatives, just like this, you will be able to save the other in education, giving them value. What is the value 
that you gave to your student. Did you think about that? What is the value? Uh, why? Because teachers aren't valued. It's an exchange. Value is an exchange. What is happening? That he doesn't value you? That he doesn't understand you? That he doesn't love you? That he thinks you are a teacher that isn't good? That isn't good in a certain subject? It isn't that. We need to understand, to understand there exists a mythology. We need to have conviction that the mythology is that brings to, th to this saving. Because if I have a mythology that respects, that gives value, emotion, of course, it's going to have learning. We have to understand. We have to learn. We, it's so beautiful. You, ha you didn't know to take this and all of a sudden learning. I'm reading. Isn't that great? I am writing. I'm communicating other ways. I write to you. I, this is great. Other thing that we have to consider, it's familiar. We need to know families. We have to know their story, their history, and not judge them. Because that woman, this and that, and the father is in jail. Because at home there's no food. There's situations. The family situation is genetic. The family situation is a form. The ca it is a home. This, this, it, it's. We have to. We have to. We we can't do gossip about this. We have to be able to to accept this, receive this, and this is our process, nothing. This matter that we, that we have lots of respect, it's emotional. I need to know not to psychologize everything. Everything is psychology. Ah, because this, because of that. Not even Freud. People sometimes say Freud explains. He doesn't explain. You have to understand a lot to do analysis. You know the process to know what is happening. And then it's not you to have an institute, an, a, a feeling. You have to, if your student is sad, you have to ask him. If your student is agitated, you have to go to him, approach him. If he is not doing what he has to do, you have to go to him and see. You have to seek the family. You, have, you can't keep thinking, I think this, I think that. You have to see what really is happening. Sciences is with evidences, evidences. And for this, I need to see, a, I have to have a basis. I have to have knowledge. And then remember, remember this. The matter cognitive cognition is important. I have to know of his education, how the person learns, how they learn, how that how they learn, how individuals learn, the tripod of education. I have functions, cognition that register the emotional that connects what I have to learn with the interest of those that are that, the emotional issue. I have to have cognitive situations, the knowledge of this. I cannot put things in my mind of a student, of any person that doesn't have knowledge. The, the era 
of these children, what do they want? They want vocabulary, what's this, what's that, that they have recognition for then they can access, they have access, they have information. And this is very important. And this is important. And this is the name to execute, to do. But for this to happen, I need to emotion and the knowledge of the cause, the knowledge of the, what's learning, then I really have education. Then I have education. Then there's the path. I have to perceive the social and social emotional factors which situation the child lives in, what are the rules in the house, and they're social emotional. So I have to see, I do, I need to know the social. Do you think I have a possibility or do I go and fight with everyone? Do I have a control? Or do I go saying whatever I want? I have to understand all of this. I have to understand and consider the organic questions. Does he see? Because seeing, does he hear well? This is important. Does he have a difficulty? Does he have a neurological difficulty, emotional difficulty? There are so many issues. Was he born with anemia? I have to consider all these factors. Not all, this is content. This content is important, but these issues are also vital for us to know this student, for him to receive the content. We have to take into consideration the child in his functionality. When I see all this functionality, when I perceive all this functionality of the child, for sure, I will see the child. This is very important. The other thing I have to understand, the pedagogical. I have to understand what is the pedagogy of the school of the teachers, to be a teacher. If the teacher is against the pedagogy of the school, so what's going to happen? How is the child going to learn? The coordinator, he has to be proactive. I have to have a technical staff that is active with the situation. It's like this, we don't have problems or not, we're going to have problems. So in the, st in the stat class, they're going to speak bad of the student. Then there's going to be gossip. And that you can't consider. You have to also look the brain situation, neurophysical, all of this, a general view. It's not simply if the, st the student writes, or if he doesn't um, keep the content, there is a universe that we have to consider. And with this, we discovered also these problems. Because if I have my staff that is going with us step by step, wonderful, it's great. Then I start to see the problem that we have. What happens that the student can't learn? Then I know the functionality. I know what to consider, the mythology, the organization. Then I need to know the problems that accompany this child the psychomotor issues. He, he has problems. 
and he falls, psychomotor issues. He falls, he trips, psychomotional issues. So we have to also see that. So there's a PE teacher that's going to help me, a gym teacher. Maybe I need someone, another professional. I need a psychotherapist. I need a professional that will understand this problem because there are emotional problems. I need to understand who is this child to perceive the difference and, the, and see what's different problems, attention problems. Does he, is he able to maintain attention? And for this, his history, pr cognitive problems, this tripod of what he has, problems of perception. I give, I tell him a joke, and then he's not even listening. You know, where is his attention? We need to know, maybe something in front of him. He doesn't perceive that the teacher started class. These, these have to, see, we have to see all these issues. Memory problems, but memory problems. I say a sentence and I see if he memorizes it, it with the whole book in his hand, with a sentence, with a page. I start telling him things, problems, psycholinguistic problems in the room, in the articulation, and the way he speaks. There is something that the person can speak a few words wrongly, but he can also have difficulty to articulate, oral articulation. They're not able to speak the word. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I try again. And so is the issue of his orality and problems of behavior, which is disruptive. That is, it's the, it is a challenge. Those that don't accept orders, that don't accept commitments, those that accept anything that comes from an adult, and then he migrates to the conduct of behavior. He's antisocial, delinquent, and then he goes to I breaks the social pathy, and then. These are those that are, you see them. He, I do something and he does it again because these are transtorns. We have to know about these. These are disorders. We have to know about this disorder problems, but scientific problems, not only problems that are going to take to gossip in the classroom. Everything that the resolution is difficult or complicated, there's a problem. Yes, that's why today in education in the 21st century, we speak with problems. Why we work with problems? Because everything that the, that the solution is difficult or complicated, it's a problem. Did you know that? This is life. And so what do we, we teach the student to live, not be quiet. He cannot be a victim of the problem. He cannot victim of the bad teacher, victim of the school, victim of the traffic, victim of mom and dad. No, we have to work with the problem. We have to take that this student is a problem and start to think that this lucid is a solution for my research is a for my knowledge it's a solution for my interaction for the knowledge of my role as a scientist of education and not only it's a problem. It's a student with a problem. What is this? We have to remember a lot and seriously. And I would like you not to forget this. Open your ears. Listen to this. Continuous failures can cause 
continuous failures. Something zero, another zero, something else, zero. And so in the classroom, he only made zero grade. You don't study. This causes problems. Okay? This also causes problems. Who is causing problems in you? You who speak too much, you speak without fundaments, without experience, without science. We need to remember that conne negative connections with learning brings problems in learning, debt in learning. And this is a posture. This is the way you, your posture, the way you deal with this. And so I ask you, what do we need to change? Be careful with low self-esteem, because if the student has low self-esteem, can you imagine, I'm stupid, I'm ugly, I'm this and that, and you are confirming this all the time and laughing at him and giving him zeros. Who got zero one task? and he got 0 0.1 in the next test. You have to say congrats, one more positive grade. It's not zero anymore. You got 0 0.1. You are doing better. You are stimulating the student. You are making his inside better. You cannot stop dismotivating the student to learn. Many go to school just to eat because there is no other motivation except the food. You have a little thing, they have things to eat, they have a canteen, a cafeteria, they go, they go to the little garden and they go to the canteen and they can't do this with other people. So what are we going to do? You have your open ears with me, so listen, don't close your ears, nor your heart. We have to have our ears really open because there are very serious issues. Learning involves a process of training. It's not simply something. There's a process, and a process dynamical it's a process that is wonderful and they're sensorial neurological passical pedagogical psychological you saw this in the university you study fundaments didactics all of this you don't study the ability training to work with inclusive students. A pedagogue has to work and know this, and he has to go through this. He has to pass on the teacher that the contact be easy, light, that the content be marvelous, smooth. This is learning. How wonderful. Isn't that great? So these factors that involve in learning are very serious. They are factors that are psychodynamic factors. These psychodynamic factors work with our brain. And so f lack of attention, it's not that he's lazy. They, the, there could be some difficult, some functional difficulty in this area. Listening, l watching, eyes, ears, there may be problems. We have to see this. You, I have to repeat this. For you not to repeat this, you cannot see the fact. You have to see the factors, social factors, emotional factors, and, emo and motivational factors. How way I will motivate in the classroom? How will I give them emotion in the classroom? What am I going to do differently? So this student learns. Maybe he has intellectual issues, a, a, a may lower IQ, he, that, that he can't learn, learn together, 
in this moment, but I'll learn. I'll learn. Look at my finger to you. I'll learn. There is not someone that doesn't learn. All learn. These school factors, this dyspedagogy, what is this? It's the trans torn. It's to trans. It's a disorder of a teacher that doesn't know how to teach. He thinks he's great. He has the wrong mythology. It's the teacher versus the student, and not teacher and student. Mediation. Oh, my God. Something that we need to understand is this diagnosis of the different, the differential of of learning disorders and uh, difficulties of learning and the comorbidities, the social comorbidities. Co children come with these sometimes. What do we need to consider? Variations, normal variations in what? In academic achievement. You have to have a process. You have to have a protocol to know. This is called what? Normatization. This means evolution. This means development, protocol protocols in development. Each area has its protocols, emotional, social, physical, pedagogical. You have to know this student, if he involved more or less, we need to know the lack of opportunity because I didn't have opportunity because I was helping my mother at home. So you're going to say that your mother this and that because something is happening at home you have to understand the lack of opportunity and, and you have to see homework so if the student has a lot of homework and he can't do it because he because he has so much things to do at home divide it in three cultural issues that are always saying nothing with nothing visual prejudices that we had in pandemic issues, we need to have, we have to identify precocious identification before that it happens, before that latter at the end, the, the person is a terrible husband, terrible person, alcoholic, in jail, drugs. We have to see this because the school is a space where the child and the adolescent remains a long time, more time sometimes than at home. So we need to, we cannot deny these precocious issues. So if they look a little crooked, let's take him to an ophthalmologist. So if he's sort of bumping in everything, take him to an orthopedics. Oh, it's difficult. In the law, there's a health, there's a health area, there's a health place, and there's a health office where you send them. Ah, oh, it's difficult. Ah, oh, it's difficult. Yes, it is difficult, but you need to resolve this. Something what I would like you guys to discuss and not forget, each flying cockroach feeling like a butterfly that doesn't have conditions and speaks a lot, like in Minas Gerais, we say this. So the cockroach is a cockroach. It's not a butterfly. There's no more metamorphosis. It's a cockroach. It feels like a butterfly, giving diagnosis here and there, speaking. We need to teach how to think recognize competencies and abilities and live emotions. This is what we need to do. Stop being a cockroaches about speaking about the life of children that don't go anywhere. We have to stop this. We have to stop 
to do pedagogical bullying. Oh, he's strange, he's dirty, he doesn't smell good, you're this and that, this and that, you don't brush your teeth. What is this? Give the child a toothbrush. Take him to the dentist. Come on. Go to a health office. Donate. Instead of being a problem, be a solution. Who only went through knows how it hurts. Did you go through this? So you know how it hurts. If you haven't gone through this, don't want to go through this. It hurts a lot. And, and it brings you to terrible conducts. And one of is is not to want to learn. So take care of this. So you as a teacher, you have to be worried as an educator. An educator is someone that takes knowledge that constructs a relationship, an interactive relationship, knowledge, student, student and those together. It's mediator. It's a student with himself. And this is biggest of the biggest. And this is the goal, this encounter that we are having here. It's a knowledge. It's knowledge. It's an action of construction. It's to reconstruction. It didn't do well well now, but I. it will happen. I am here. Things will change. I will help you. Remember, to learning is to involve various senses, various senses already predicted. But others that I didn't speak another language, I didn't know. I knew how to drive. They're unprecedented things, unique. I didn't know. I know how to drink. I didn't know that I can use the computer. These are unique of the competencies that the abilities will bring us and motivating us and bringing answers. Now, today, you arrive to a boy two boy two boy a year a boy of two year olds and you show it to him and my little grandson says grandmother the game is this way and that way this ability i don't have i explained to my little grandson grandma doesn't know could you please teach me so when i make a lot of mistakes my grandson says pay attention Look at the colors, grandmother. He is my mediator. And I am what? I did everything to learn, to be with him. And he is motivated. Grandma, let's play the, let's play. But look, the time has, I have available. You see on the watch, this time is what I have available. Then you don't cry if I say it's enough. Okay, Grandma, I will not cry. And then he says this to me, Grandma, help me. I already said that now time is up. Okay, all right, Grandmother. Another day we will play game again. This is mediation. This is teaching. I don't have to say, I am gra grandmother. When I was young, we didn't have this. But we had, and we did have it, learning and education. Maybe we played other things, marbles or other things, Atari. All this is learning. So it doesn't help. I'm old, and old people don't learn. Don't say this, because this is all also to unlearn. The goal of those involved in the process are teachers, are educators, are students, and the construction of the sense. The sense 
that you, teacher, the teacher, mediator, he should clear what is the concept that is being constructed. It has to be clear in his mind. It can't be confused. He also has to perceive the parts, the value, the knowledge, the abilities, the competencies, and always say to the other that he is important. This is education, content, with, 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 a, with meaning is loss of time, learning with meaning, with significance, congratulate for this event, for this encounter, thinking that the experience of learning mediated is the true learning. Congratulations all for listening to me, those that organized this material. I want to say thank you so much to you all. Don't get into panic. Don't enter into the solution. You are have a solution. This study, the process of learning, behavior, emotional behavior, calmly, not to forget, and know your difficulties in a professional way that should englobe various fields of knowledge, Make, synthesizing them and integrating them. This is learning. What I don't know, the other will help me. And this, and things will go. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's a lot of cockroaches that they think they are butterflies. And I'm sure over there where you are, there are only butterflies. Gratitude, appreciation. It was great being with you all. Oh, sorry, without microphone. We accompanied the speaker, Angela Matilde Suargas, psychoanalysis, psychopedagogue, neuroscientist, master and doctor in psychoanalysis, speaking about the impacts of the emotional cognition, the impacts in learning and in social and emotional relations. This was very commented in our chat, everyone sharing emotions, especially agreed to Emilio Valereto. He is accompanying us in Dublin. Ex, he was also a student of LGW in Sao Paulo, always connected with us. He's Eliel Bruno from Rio de Janeiro accompanying us. The students really need the support and the teachers also, and they have to feel valued. Leila Nirosha also accompanying, appreciating Angela. Open your ears because now we have one more lecture. Nova Jer New Jersey also, someone's thinking it's interesting the knowledge to teach students with learning difficulties. Adelarve, also congratulations about the theme and presentation of this subject, highlighting being problem is not, being different is not the issue. We need to treat the person. And from New York, Dr. Angela, thank you so much. And the energy sharing this conversation. And you are th with us today. You can continue sharing your experiences, your messages, those that are here with us, sharing and giving us suggestions, questions to our team. So like this, you can share 
with us your impressions with this encounter. And we invite you, those that are here with us today, share in the social network, LGW, because we put this in our Instagram, all that are in our public, LBV Brazil. The next speaker tonight, it has also the theme about emotional, is Karen Scavacini. She is master in public health in promoting and preventing suicide by Karolinski Institute in Sweden. She is a psycholog psychologist, psychotherapist. She was a revisor of the report by World Health Organization, which was the report Preventing Suicide in a Global Imperative. She was also co-founder of Institute Vitae Allergy. She's technical director of the National Commission of, uh, of Suicide Issues, especially in Facebook. She's responsible for the committee uh, consultative about self-harm for Facebook. She's also hashtag I am, and she's creator of the I am coordinator postgrad in the Vitaleri in various of various subjects in Brazil and coordinator and technical of the activities in the course of prevention of suicide of professional insecurity. She will speak about this today and is, is it possible to have health in challenging such times? Is it possible to have health in challenging times? This is the theme. Good evening, all. Welcome to this conversation, this lecture, also virtually, but soon we'll all be together and presential. It is an honor to be here today, to bring here a little of my knowledge, and I hope it'll make sense for you that you will be able to bring to you when we are together things that make sense and that can transform and transform into actions. I am Kari Scaracini. I'm psychologist, psychotherapist, co-founder of Institute of Vitae Aleri, Masters in Public Health in Prevention and Promoting Suicide by the Karolinski Institute in Sweden. I'm representative in Brazil of suicide prevention in Brazil. It's an international issue, scientific director of VEX of prevention and suicide. I have books and chapters on these themes and so on. I'm here to speak with you about emotional health, how it is our emotional health, what happened in the pandemic, and more, what we can do with all of this. Just to begin, I would like to ask you all to breathe deeply, perceive how you are sitting, sit comfortable. If we are speaking about mental health and emotional health, the first steps is to perceive how we are at the present moment. You're not breathing too much, breathe deeply so we can continue. And I would like to invite all to think what was most difficult for you in the period of pandemic. You can say in the chat a word, a sentence that was difficult in the pandemic. I bet that many will put similar things. It shows us that people had similar situations and sensations. So let's start with the basic. What is mental health? How can we understand our feelings, our emotions, and where do we go? I love the the, 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 the picture. 
it shows us here this cartoon, all the emotions we can have, this cartoon. In a certain way, we are sort of looking. Uh, sorry who didn't see this. There'll be a spoiler. In this cartoon, we hope that the sadness disappears and that the only emotion that remains will be happiness and that sadness isn't has it exists we cannot just take sadness and take it away that that control table of emotions that start to be a little complicated when we get into adolescence shows us that many of the feelings and we have a lot of feelings all of them are important and that if only one commands not necessarily this is good remember when you were sort of mad so mental health anger with mental health we could live well well-being state and react to what happens to us. So if we lost someone important, it's normal that we are sad, we become sad. And also this situation, that this mourning makes us deal with this process and sadness is this also. But there are losses in some situations, just like happiness and other emotions fear and other feelings anger in this moment if you have some feeling and what is this feeling you have we speak that feelings and just for you to know the difference of emotion and feeling emotion is the reaction in our brain it's an it's it's immediate could being we could breathe li differently, our heart beats differently, but it doesn't involve thinking. It's physical. And feeling is how we react, how we perceive, how we feel, and evaluate the emotion. And fe in the, it could be with the past, the mo of, and I feel I am sensations in this moment. I can be, for instance, anxious of what is going to happen in the future, tomorrow, or in a while. So let's say everyone th thinks and thought differently in the pandemic. I spoke things that are similar, but I'm speaking differently. But I want to say that things are individual. Nothing is wrong with feelings. I'm going to speak a little about when we look at these feelings differently. So look health is the state of well-being it's more the lack of mental disorders we can make various things to promote mental health and without mental health there is no health the world health organization says we need to take care of our mental health to know identify what does us well and what causes us and does us harm in terms of our mental health all of us are taking scars of this issue some uh, didn't even heal the scars hurt they're open especially for those that lost someone we are not the same people that we are that we were two years ago, even though now resuming, there's an expectation, people are re-encountering, seeing each other. Is everything the same? No. I don't know if you had this sensation. Put it in the chat if you think it's different, the same. But do you think, is it possible that we come become the same way we were before the pandemic? We went through two years hearing that we we couldn't go out of the house we had to be careful to encounter the other was so dangerous that we could con get contaminated die or hurt someone that's dear so we had to isolate ourselves for a long while till the vaccines came and now the vaccines are here and the pandemic is how it is but in these two years, we were in stress and preoccupation, loss, 
mourning. So we cannot be the same as two years ago. And I say this in schools. I know there are many educators that are watching this lecture that youngsters are coming back to school. They grow physically, but emotionally and socially, they will need a while because the impact of COVID, will it be lasting in our health, in our mental health? We never spoke about mental health like we are speaking now. This is an important issue because prejudice and stigma is leaving a little. People are looking for help. Unfortunately, we had to lose a little bit of our mental health to give attention for this part and import in the way we function. So what we saw in many of the studies is, is that mainly youngsters had increase of symptoms of anxiety, depression, that could transform and it could transform into symptoms some sign signals that are happening especially with youngsters during this period of course the whole population was affected we expected in the beginning that the older population would be more affected of course there was an impact but the impact in the youngsters was bigger because the social issues is fundamental and they still don't have so much maturity emotional maturity to do with lots of things that we have to deal with for adults it was difficult various situations can you imagine the youngsters that are in this process to young they're young who they are and how to deal with their emotions we saw that the percentage of adults that told of their anxiety symptoms and during the pandemic, 56% of the of people of 18 to 24, they said they had symptoms of of disorder, anxiety. 49 for 25 to 40, 39% of 50 to 64 and 30% of 65 and more. This shows us that yes, the youngsters, like adolescents, the youngsters had an impact which was bigger. And another question that we always ask, and we ask when we speak about emotional health and resuming the situation, if suicide increased, and I will tell you, and I study this very much, no we did not have an increase of the number of suicide cases however we saw there was an impact in the mental health of the general population still we might be in a pandemic and we have an increase but we had a dimin it, it decreased in 18 percent in brazil in a certain period this shows us that people that are closer to us that we saw that also had an increase domestic violence, drugs and alcohol, and and sometimes living together was, so this, the, this, um, this, this living together also made, a, could have been a protection. Another issue that was a challenge in this period was stress, stress. We heard people speak, oh, I'm so stressed. And many still are feeling this stress when now that we're resuming our lives. Let's make a differentiation. Stress is a physiological reaction, automatic. And also the body, we need, we need, um, it's a reaction that I have something that occurs. Stress is a wear out. It shouldn't be we have stress all the time other things that could increase stress are environmental issues in family financial issues we know so many people have financial problems they lost their jobs 
they have health problems, family problems, difficulty in work, or not work at all, no work at all, no jobs, no money. Also with relationships that are not good relationships, difficult relationships, go through divorce periods, separation moments. Of course, the pandemic also was one of the factors. So let's understand stress is a consequence of situations, not a cause. It's a consequence. What are the signals that this stress is too much, difficulty to concentrate, problems of memory, you can't remember things too much, of course. Let's say to spend the whole day in front of a computer, we really get tired and we can't pay too much attention. So I hope of you in this night period, went through the whole day doing a lot of things, now can have a little bit of a bit, a little more of what this wonderful program is doing. So like this, you can see this great program. Constant headaches, muscle pains, problems with your intestines, discomforts, nauseas, dizziness, accelerated heartbeat. Some are other symptoms of stress. But isn't this an uh, anxiety? Anxiety is a disorder that is the characteristic, is a preoccupation, excessive preoccupation, or, a pr or too much expectations. We can go through this. This is a period of stress that brings anxiety. It Anxiety crisis, like we saw recently in Recife School, where the students had an anxiety, uh, a, a collective anxiety stress. And this is a preoccupation and the sensation constantly that something bad is going to happen. For some people, anxiety could become a panic crisis and it can also bring a burnout. Why? What is it? People speak about burnout. It's a strind syndrome. It's, it's chronic stress. It's a long time. It's a depletion and exhaustion. And it occurs at work. It's a breakdown. Many times anxiety is more common than we think of. Brazil is a country that has the biggest number of anxious people. This is before the pandemic. Can you imagine? So we are going to deal with things that already were happening with us, that we weren't having a, a point of view that was adequate. So what are some of the tips to deal with stress and anxiety? Live in the present. Not ignore everything of my history, my, or not expectations in terms of the future. Think of what we can do now. What can I do? that I can change, what I can change, what I am now, how I am now. Compute, communicate pacifically. So this diminishes our stress and of the other also. And with the result, we can diminish and we can communicate better. Who doesn't know this? Get to know nonviolent communication. It's not normal to be stressed all the time. Everyone needs pauses to have pauses. You need to reconnect. And spirituality is in this context. It is a factor of protection for many health, emotional, mental health issues, like sleeping well. Have you been sleeping well? How is your sleeping? Or do you go and take your cell and fidget on your cell? You need hygiene of the sleep. Discover what does well, what is good for you, what nutritions you, and think of your limits. Think of your limits, you and I. But we have to get to know our limits. Some other people had also, as I said, an increase of disorder, depression, who should make an evaluation if, a, if you need a disorder, a, you need a psychiatrist, don't be scared or look for a psychologist. Sometimes the treatment of anxiety and depression 
will be something, a partnership between psych psychology, and psych psychology and psychiatry. It also helps. Sometimes exercise is good and also good food. And so, where do we start? From everything that I have told you, in the beginning I asked you what was most difficult in the pandemic. And now I put you, ask you to put this in the pandemic. What is your fear now that we are resuming our life? Is it easy? What is more difficult? Put it in the chat for us to know. We are, little by little, warming up our jets. We can't go out quickly. We are warming up our turbines slowly. We need patience. We need patience with ourselves, with others, with the situation. We spent two years hearing that it was difficult and harmful to encounter people. We need patience to live with people again, to resume, to restart, to be in public places, the noise, the people, the movement. We have to reaccustom ourselves. Yes, a few days ago I was listening I was at a presential meeting and I heard noises and sounds and I heard and I thought, my God, it's been two years has, that I haven't been in an event that there were lots of people because I've been in the pandemic. So you know it was difficult for me. So people that did isolation or that couldn't, this resuming this has to be gradual. You have to have patience with yourself and believe in the flexibility that we have. We were flexible, weren't we? We were isolated. Now we have to believe in flexibility and our way of adapting, our adapting and the people around us. We don't know of the person that was near us in the work if he went through a difficult situation, if he's mourning, we have to feel empathy for the other. Another form for to deal with all of this is have more self-care. What is this of resuming our life? You're telling me about self-care. Let's think about this together. If we don't take care of ourselves, who will take care of us? And you know the oxygen that comes down on the train, that comes down when you're an airplane. The first thing the stu the the hair hostess says is first you connect the air with yourself, then the others. No one is a hundred percent. People is getting re is warming up the turbines. Look at yourself and think of what can be done. Self care is a set of attitudes of taking care of yourself, valuing your thoughts, your emotions, and the attempt to administer or even solution some of things that are bothering you or even situations that aren't well resolved. The idea is that this should be a habit of what is possible and not perfect because perfect will never attain. But what is possible of self-care in your day-to-day. -day. Take care of yourself, doesn't believe, stop dealing or taking care of others. But it's an act of love for yourself, of caring and preoccupation for yourself. So like this, you can be every time taking care of others also. It's also with our feelings, with social issues, it's physical, mental, emotional, social. It is digital and harmony. So how is your digital health? All the networks and all, and all the things that you used in this period. Now the self-care physical to be well with your you emotional practice, uh, psychotherapy, self-knowledge, also pardoning yourself is also important. D contact with people that support you, 
and empathy with others, mental, cognitive, cognition, to have a hobby, to have moments of pressure, and also leisure time. Read a book, go to the movies, things that stimulate yourself, spiritual issues that do you well, that connect you. So now, let's let's greet our fragilities and reconstruct them. When we can reconstruct together, it's easier. What is our support network? Who can we account, count with? Who can you count with? That's important. We have a, a memory of how things were, but how is it now? Let's adapt the best way possible. Everyone changed, some lost, some very dear people. We need support from close people of our family, our friends. Go to professional psychotherapists. Be sincere with yourself and believe yourself. Don't believe of everything that's in the internet. Everyone in the internet learned how to make bread, did gym an hour, took care of plants. It's what they show, but it's not their reality. For teachers, educators, psychological uh, professionals, there are a lot of things that we see in the vitaleri.com. We have a lot of things for you to read, parents, psychologists, students in so in a, a health students there's a mapping of of mental health and there are areas where you can go if you need mental health issues but i can't pay i don't have a health plan go into this mapasaudimental.com they can help you there there's the cvv Center of Valoriz Valuing of Life. And there's also one called You Can Talk to Me, where there's a chat where young kids can talk from 13 to 21 years. There are things that you can do to help yourself. When you have a lot of symptoms, when you cannot continue, when you think of death and you perceive that there is no energy, it is time to ask for help. No problem to ask for help. You're not weak if you ask for help. On the contrary, you will see what is difficult and the paths that you can take. So this is my end of my lecture. So when we can put and take and put out and, and speak about our feelings, what our reactions and speak about that, it is so good. Know what does well, what doesn't do me well, what can I do to improve, who can help me. These are some of the paths that we have. I know teachers are dealing with, uh, there's a lot of demands from the students. It's very difficult, but it is possible that we can each time more see the needs of others and we can also welcome our feelings. We have a long path, but we need to take care. So this walking, this path, be more tranquil and accompanied, it's even better. Now, finalizing, put it in the chat, how you feel after this encounter. What makes sense? What makes sense of from what you heard? I thank you so much for being here today. It's an honor to be here, and I hope that you enjoy the knowledge that you will receive these days of encounter. Thank you so much. L look at our networks. There's a lot of things for you to see. See you soon. Thank you so much, Karen Scavacini, psychologist, psychotherapist, speaking of those, these themes. Many participation in our chat in YouTube. Register your opinions. 
the educators of Brazil, the United States, and those that watch us, you could do this and tell us, how are you? How do you feel after this encounter, after these thoughts? Share this with us. And in lbv.com, because we want to know what you're feeling. Our next content, I want to bring a message to those that are here in Brazil accompanying us. During the event, we're going to put that you to answer of satisfaction, your evaluations of these that we know. We can, uh, that we will have. This is a proncopation. We want to know and know what you feel and what you think. Your feedback is so important. Could be in the chat of YouTube. It's going to be in your email. It's a research for you to understand. And in the other country, the research will also be forward to your email. Not today, but in the following days, you will receive a research so you can bring your impressions and your observations about our encounter. Fill out this research. It's so important, this survey. Thank you so much. This survey is important. We know part of the event that all love is when we show in practice the day-to-day. -day. This is the challenge in all areas, transforming learning into thought and practical issues in the day-to-day. -day. Now we're going to accompany uh, the, the, the Legion of Goodwill. And Aline Braga Martinez, she's vice director of the Educational Goodwill Group of LW, LBW. She's going, we're going to accompany the thoughts, relearning impacts of the impact in the school community, gaps, learning, technology, and emotional health. How are we adapting? This is what we are going to see now. And it was taped by the professionals in the school. And so these people are going to bring this content and they produced what we are going to see. Hello, that are accompanying us, the 24th International Congress of LGW. I am Alini Braga Martinez, and I am Vice Director of the Ec Ec Educational Good Group. Who wants to travel? We're going to travel. Vacation is coming, and we're going to travel here. We're all the experiences, and now that we're back, into presential class and see the curriculum advances. You think it was easy? Oh, uh, I don't know. We are going to, in this moment, go into a time machine. Close your eyes, close your eyes. All right, now we are going to go together to March of 2020, where everything started. Come with us. Now our trip starts officially. We're, we're in a school where we had professionals of the whole, the period of the pandemic, offering support to the families, P teachers at home, and sh they had all the material, but at home, working at home, Valeria, tell us how it was, this condition of, you know, what you went through in the pandemic it was a big challenge for the families because a big part of these families, they work informally and how to do this to be able to support a family in a process where no one goes out of the house. Families that didn't have work, didn't have money, no jobs. What did we observe? There was a lot of challenge, 
in terms of internet. They didn't have access, very limited access, and families then didn't have homes. They had they had to go to emergency emergency situations because they couldn't pay rent. They didn't go to a hotel. They didn't have money. So sometimes the family seek us to find strategies to help them. So orientation was we do video conferences and we would try to find solutions so they would have conditions so we could give them support. I couldn't get material. The school tried to help us, but some didn't have access because things were closed. So we tried to make less the suffering. There were people didn't have blankets when it was very, very cold. So we too had to help this family with blankets. There were moments we wanted to help the self-esteem of these families. It was a big challenge. We tried to see if we could deal with these difficulties. We wanted to supply them and meet their difficulties. Now, now 20 to 22, we are in front, in the, and we are here with our students now, presential. And of course, with everything that happened in two years, lots of things changed. And who is going to tell us in this LGW Congress in Education is here in Sao Paulo, is Gabriela Kisser, is Elis Angeli. One, tell us, in child education, is everything the same? It was a big challenge. Was that the school adaptations. We had many, the first week of school, it, it was very, difficult to deal with the children because they had different routines now they had to come to school because for the two years they the children were in home and then they had to come to school again the routine was different because they were little children they had to wake up and come to school before they stayed home they had to be sort of re-educated because there were difficulties. We had to show them things to do. We have projects. There are different foods here in school, so they had to adapt themselves and give them support. So like this, they would adapt with the school routine. And then we had to incorporate their, the, uh, we had to commute with them differently many didn't have much access and so we had to sort of stimulate them to learn we had to stimulate them to do gym class because they were so much at home so we took them out to play we proposed many issues and also there was a, we had to develop them also in terms of language because they're two, three years old. And so we had to teach them new words. There was a delay. And so we are doing various works in classroom. And so they can learn many things. So they could recuperate their speech because they were two years at home. And we needed to stimulate these children. That's why coming to school was important all this stimulation and uh, tell me about the basic school six tell us us about the basic school everything that happened with coming back to school the challenge was to readapt to living with other children socialization 
the organizing themselves, especially sixth, seventh grade kids, that they came from the fifth grade. And so they now they're in the sixth grade. They had to adapt themselves in the basic schools with different subjects and different teachers. And so we worked with them in school so they can organize themselves in the classroom to adapt and all these different subjects. This, and also the teachers and also rescue some of the contents that they had before. So we had to rescue them. And so we had to work and they become aware so they begin to continue. That's it, everyone. Those that are sitting here with us, you're thinking, oh, I went through all of this. How did we do it here and reorganize this pedagogical practice and deal with this reality? Now, now we are going to travel to see a little bit about the practices of this reorganization in our school. Child education, destiny. This trip is with child education. We are in the super, we are with our teacher and she's gonna daycare nursery and how it was developed. We. We are with the children in Sao Paulo. We work, we work, work with this book by Tatiana Faust. We, we work with this little book. First phase, we deliver these books with a little stick. And the children would accompany reading word by word with these little sticks. So like this, they could follow us from right to left. And all of this was so they could understand word by word. And then the second phase, we showed them this book. It's called Fuba by Tatiana Kraus. And we started to look and seek where this book was. And they were looking and trying to find this little book around the school. And they were looking also for this little animal. And what do we do with this? And they started to look at this little drawing. And we used to, and they used to find it. And they used to color it. It was really great. Here is this little donkey. And they were looking for the donkey. And they were coloring the donkey. And it was really great. In the third phase, what is, and there was a word called, word called Fuba, which was with F. And so they had Fuba, they ha which is the name of this little donkey. So we had to analyze the word, the letter F, how many letters was in this word, the way we our mouth goes, the different letters in this word. We show the children all these little paths that this word had, which is the name of the donkey. So we slowly show the child that the fuba, what's what it means, and fuba. You can always, you can also eat fuba, and so what we did is we tried to teach them, because fuba also is something that we can eat, and so it was something was an experience for the child. And so it was comeal. And so they, we took this comeal and we tried to sh teach them and get into contact. What was the smell? You see, this is the comeal. 
And so this little donkey had the name of Comiel. And he saw, and the children saw that Comiel is sort of a nickname for the little donkey. And so they had the F, because Comiel in Portuguese is Fuma, which is F. So what they did, we took the Comiel, we drew an F, a U, a B, an A. So we tried to connect everything so everything would make sense. And so they loved doing this, and they had a lot of fun. And then another stage. And everyone had to receive this. And there was an interactive session. And all the little donkeys that everyone drew, they brought them together. Because each child made a drawing. One child made the little donkey brown, and the other child made it red, and they, they had to write the name of the color. And each one asked the other child the color of their little donkey. After that, we started to take the co-meal, and we started to test the ingredients, because we also wanted to show them that even though the donkey name was Fubá or Comio, this, this Comio can also be, could come something that we can eat. So we brought some, a nutritionist that taught the children how to make this. So this contact was something that was explored in all areas, they learned the donkey, about the donkey, they colored the donkey, they gave, the donkey had a name that came from a book, and we made Comio, which is the Fuba. This was all connected, so this is new things. Continuing our time, I'm with a nice group, a great group. These are the teachers of the second year of basic school. And now we're going to think about child education, about the development. And these are requirements for these teachers here because they take the continuity. So we had students in various phases in alphabetization, not only in the first year, because this is the phase where we have a lot of challenge, but we had students in various different phases, in first, second, third, fourth grades. And how do we organize this? How were they able to organize the content? Because they could fill in the needs of these children that were arriving. It's a gradual system according to what the children had to develop. We had to organize the theme. We had practical exercises. Here is a word, and so the children had to insert the vowels that were missing. I am a teacher from the second year of basic education. We saw the difficulty of the students, and so we saw the words that were difficult for them. We presented to them. And then we did little exercises so, and on the top. He would write the words. They have the awareness of the sounds. He had to speak of syllables and words. And this was also important. Then we have an alphabet phase where the children understood the syllables and they perceive they also are able to present examples with little pictures. Uh, we start also 
working with their writing, thinking of the development and the ability that each child has in each phase. The activities were always very important for the children to develop this. And they were individualized because each child is different. And we tried to see what they understood from the grammar, from the vial, vowels. This activity is individual. And so we work with each child. And this is very important. And during this, the first, second, and third phase, the strategies that are being developed are strategies in the focus of their abilities, how they read, how they interpret, how they develop in terms of their their motor abilities. This was also important because they were at home. What kind of activity did you do to help these children in these requirements? For instance, so we were, we were working with writing. And so we had these little plates with this colored gel. And so the children would practice with their fingers letters. So like this, they would exercise their hands. And at the same time, they would learn how to write these, le these letters. We had meeting with the parents. And each parent would come and help us. And the parent would we would have a piece of paper and we asked the teach the parents to also write some words and we wanted to show the parents how we were dealing with their children doing the same thing with them like this they would understand what was happening in the school in the class and so in the phase of alphabetization the child is in a process and the parents don't have to be anxious because slowly the child will get there and he will be alphabetized. And the child feels that he is valued because slowly he will be able to write the, later, the letters. And this is a slow process and so his self-esteem gets better with all these exercises and the child accompanies these activities. You thought our trip ended. Now we are in our elementary primary school. Two teachers, they had Lots of challenges, a lot of challenges, right? Juliana is of math, and, uh, and Fernanda teaches Portuguese. And so we are here. And so an Egyptian queen arrived, and so she had enigmas, and she acted to work the matter of numbers. And so we brought this Egyptian queen so they could learn numbers, math. And so we wanted to show them how these numbers worked. And I called their attention because I was with these, I was here with my little um, dress and I had enigmas, and I showed the children these enigmas and how they worked and how to position these things. Like this, they became interested, and I told them stories, and I was able to take this enigma and translate it to our numbers, to write the numbers. In our system, 
than the Egyptian system, for instance. So it was a great activity because it was fun, and they saw first a story, and then they went to the numbers. And what about you in Portuguese? We worked a lot this issue, and we put it into practice in gra grammatics. We had to speak about things that were happening, so we were able to perceive what were the difficulties for these children. And so we read many things, so there was a lot of vocabulary, and so there were always proposal for us to read books, take these words, this vocabulary, and understand these vocabulary in relation to what we were reading. This was very important. And so this was a challenge for the children. And many times we had to bring these children to the playground. And we had these stories repeated. And there were two groups. And they were jumping and trying, repeating the words that were the vocabulary that we learned in the room. Then we get together in the room. We spoke of the vocab that we had been used in the room. Then we went to the went to jump rope, and then we came back to the group to the room. And so it was sort of a game where we learned words, vocabulary, and their meeting, and it, what it had to do with the story. So it was very interesting. So we were able to communicate this to the kids. It was really good. And then we jumped rope, which was fun too. So we got out of the classroom. So it was something more fun instead of just being in the room all the time. It was different. So I think the kids really liked that. It was good. And like this, they also played together. It was another activity to resume what was happening with the eighth grade. And then we, I told them about orthographic rules. And so this was also interesting. Each one had a, a letter. They would take it out of my hat. And they would choose a letter randomly. And there were rules. It was the focus was for them to find a word with that letter. So it was fun, because I came with a black vest and with a black hat. And so it was something that we could do together. And it was fun, because they didn't only think of it as grammar class. It was picking letters in a hat, and it was important. And they also were able to feel more secure. And like this, they learn grammar, and that's it. And all, here I am again. I told you we're going to travel. Now I'm in high school. This is the last station of our trip. Now arriving, yes, we are here with the teachers of high school teachers. Did you hear about us? This is it. Here we are with the new high school education. Now we're going to speak with them and ask what happened in the first semester of 2022? It was a challenge in our goal. We needed to, we had to give tools for the students to conclude in all this process demands not theoretical knowledges and lots of practice. And so the course was to my students 
and she was with us and she's going to tell us a little bit about her path it, it was really nice to be here and learn and I had the experience of being a film director and so I had this equipment and I had sound equipment we di divided this equipment in a crew and this was used because we wanted to make a film and so it was so interesting because it was an experience that I will never forget because I had a film crew and we wanted to improvise and think that we were really making a film and there was a form for people film crew and so once we were organized we took our colleagues and brought them to the studio so they could also learn with us and it was really a lot of energy for us and we also explained them the process and also we told them we spoke about um, also another part of the class we were in a group of speaking about food and so we spoke about food that was good for us we spoke about emotional food and we we learned about this and what was great is that we exchanged this with the people that were dealing with film and so and what was great we were able to observe what was happening because we spoke about where this food came from we learned about nature and we spoke about the seasons and also we needed to know about energy because the energy is also important in terms of production of food and we were able to ask each other and there was also group discussion and it was really interesting and you guys d made something yes we made something we tell us about your experiences it was important we spoke about buying food and the importance of money in the process of being able to buy food and so we had to learn why the economy was important to be able to purchase things and so we were able to connect all these subjects and it was very interesting and we were able to exchange experiences it's important and you see what we are doing in high school and so everyone knows that there are things that are various phases and you see they have various paths to go through and so and each one each is in the, another grade and it is really great so like this each one chose their path because they were able to choose the paths in 2021 and now in 2022 this week they're preparing the paths 2023 isn't that great and to complete our trip in Boa Vontade school we're going to speak about the last trip digital games we're with Bruna that was together with other teachers in this Raisa in this itinerary what was the main proposal of your itinerary 
It was that the students get to know the creation of games, how they are developed, the phases, to be able to construct this resource that they use so much and develop a, se a critical sense of this resource, just like diverse various techno technology abilities, and they will use this in their professional life. And the kids also did it. What did you like the most in this itinerary of games? I learned how to make to make a little the script, how to program games, and also the art part in the photo top. And also what I liked the most was the art part because it's easy for me because I, I like to draw. But the part about programming I thought was difficult for me. Me, I want to be in the future a, des a designer, a graphic designer. And so I saw the tools that you use the, to draw and to deal with the photos. And sincerely, it's a challenge, but it's useful. And since I want to be a graphic designer, it'll be easier to create my arts to be able to sell. And so it was an ability that is important for my life. And so this is it. We end here our participation in this International Congress of Education, leaving you an invitation for you to get to come and visit us because it's the pedagogical effect if affection and so we thank Alini Braga Mentinez of Vice Director of Boa Vontade here in Sao Paulo and all the educator, educators that participated showing their works and the actions of day to day registering the videos and it was really great of the LGW of Sao Paulo. I would like to thank also th you that are with us interacting by the chat. If you have commentaries, Simone, for instance, speaking about the importance of working, emotional work, and how it is difficult to deal with children that have difficulties in learning, and then they feel inferior, comparing themselves. And these subjects are important. Also, Angela and also bringing views, different views of emotional health and the importance of self-esteem of the children and the educators. Also, Sueli Andrade from Capão Bonito, speaking that the lectures were wonderful. She liked them. Vanusa Paiva also speaking about Mapreo, of rational research, and it's a method of LGW with education of ecumenical spirituality, it's differential. And I invite you, if you wanted to have a training with these educators of your school about the Legion de Boa Vontade, about LGW, to bring to your school environment and bring this to your knowledge, call us. 32254618 and our staff of professionals will promote a training for your staff that your director or your teachers or you could also request this i would like to thank other interactions simoni cardoso also the valuing of the process of individuality of each one. Cynthia Soto speaking about the construction of knowledge. And this is so important. She loved the Conceição, the importance of the union and the excellence of this project that brings math, grammar, showing that these are important subjects and that need to be worked together, go together, like it happens in our day-to-day -day life. Also, Josie Rodriguez, thank you very much. Great work. Like this, we are going to end our interaction with you in the chat in YouTube, highlighting it. Send us a message, another invitation that you are here with us. Get to know more about the Legion of Goodwill 
see our explications, school environment, school of legion of goodwill. We have lots of things. We have many issues and we are in many places and we can have partners. We are a big network of solidarity and this is a big arm of hope especially in the pandemic. And this pandemic was also outside the school. And so the school is also absorbing these impacts. And the school sees what happened in homes, family, and we want to give support, food security, psychosocial support. You can collaborate with us with a collaboration. Like this, we have a maintenance. We are here 72 years for a better Brazil. And each story represents millions of lives. And your donation will help. And here is our where you can donate. So last moments of our encounter, we will have one moment of warming our heart through music. The music, S-O-S, Terra. We're going to have the revival of what we sang yesterday. In these final moments, take pictures and put it in the social networks. We will sing SOS Terra. And this is our group, SOS Earth.
SOS Terra. SOS Terra. This is the choir of Boa Vontade of São Paulo Capital. All the children that were Boa Vontade and all the educators. And, we're f and uh, we finish with this encounter thanking your company. Already missed this moment of learning. And it's so good to be united. And we find solutions for the challenges from the pandemic and also the others that arrive. And we are here to find solutions and we reinforce that we all that we all share the content so we can all think of the proposals for the next year. And we hope that you participate and answer our survey. Another important event that we are going to have in this year and we anticipate it that all are here, the date and the theme, is the International Congress of Social Assistant of the Goodwill, LBV Pioneer in Education with Spirituality, and bringing also 30 and 31 of August of 2022, the 27th Congress of Social Assistance of LGW. The organization of civil society, of a social assistant, and the effectiveness of our social rights. And this will be other information about this encounter. Once again, I want to thank your company, your audience, and I want to reinforce that those who are going to receive the certificate in email and be watch your um, email because we want you to so much to receive this. We'll look out at the email about the survey and the digital. And that's it. We are going to end the 24th Congress, International Congress of Education. It was great to be with you with these two nights. And we will end with our to your God is present. Viva Jesus in our heart, always. Bye-bye.